Rule number 27, the trimming technique, one of my absolute favorites, puts a real mental twist on conventional thinking and challenges many of your current assumptions. The trimming technique proactively targets elements of your design or process to eliminate or trim. Common reasons to consider trimming include cost or complexity reduction, problematic components or process steps, circumventing patents, and creating new niche markets. In this section of the workshop, you will learn and see many examples of six uniquely powerful trimming rules. These rules can be used to get rid of any part of any system or any step in any process. Sounds impossible, but can be done. In trimming, we often use function modeling techniques to better understand the situation and prepare for trimming. Here is a function model we created earlier for a cooling system in a projector. As you remember, the power supply powers the motor. The motor rotates the fan, the fan cools the bulb, and the bulb projects light. We have a bracket that holds the motor, humidity that corrodes the bracket, and a motor that vibrates the bulb. Can we trim the fan? Let's look at the six trimming rules. As we have already learned, the first of six rules has the problem solver figure out how to get other parts of the system or super system to pick up the slack of the trimmed component. So, the fan cools the bulb. If the fan is trimmed, we must now figure out how any of the other components can cool the bulb. Any ideas? Can you think of a way to get the motor, power supply, bracket, humidity, or even the light to cool the bulb? At least two practical ways exist. Rule number four of six has the problem solver figure out how to get by without the function. Again, the fan cools the bulb. If we don't have to cool the bulb, we don't need the fan. Can you come up with a concept where you don't have to cool the bulb? At least two practical ways exist. Take a quick peek at one of several software tools for computer-aided innovation. This particular one has a module with a uniquely organized comprehensive database of over 8,500 scientific effects and technical examples. The beauty of this database is threefold. One, it's organized by function. Two, it has cross-industry knowledge, automotive, consumer products, aerospace, etc. And three, it has cross-discipline knowledge, electrical ways of doing things, mechanical ways of doing things, chemical ways of doing things, optical ways of doing things, and so on. On the left side, you'll see quite a large list of folders. Each of these folders holds several scientific effects. These folders are organized by function. For example, if I wanted to find a better way to cool something, I would look through these folders and probably not pick substance form or substance combine. If I was trying to cool something, I might pick parameter decrease. If I pick that, it shows me a whole bunch of different parameters that could be decreased. Well, I'm not talking about vibrations or electric field parameters or fluid parameters, but down here you'll see one that says decrease temperature, which is exactly what I want. So I'd open up that folder, and in that folder are several scientific effects and engineering examples on how to decrease temperature that come from different industries and different physics. 
Each one of these scientific effects has a at least a paragraph showing you how it works, formulas and equations when appropriate, and even a little animated movie that shows you how the phenomenon works. Pretty neat, huh? In trend analysis, we're identifying trends that are shaping the future. As an example, if you were in the appliance industry designing a next generation refrigerator, the development team must identify what trends are happening directly or indirectly related to the appliance industry or society in general that may determine the product's success or failure. Examples may include food packaging types, food type, family size, styling themes for interiors, kitchen size, the environmental movement, design for assembly, design for disassembly, energy usage, aging population, mass exclusivity, etc., etc. What can you do to make sure that these trends are not violated, or better yet, what can you do to have your product take a lead position in the dominant trends? With over 25 systematic innovation tools, it can get rather confusing where to start. If you remember, this is precisely why we created the Tool Selection Matrix, to help you select the right tool or set of tools that are appropriate for your situation. And finally, without going into detail, this slide will give you a further idea of the breadth of topics covered and explained in our Systematic Innovation Workshops. Hit the pause button if you want to review the list.